Hello and welcome. My name is David Chérez Vitella and on this video, I will walk you through the process of making a Blondie painting. But first, I'm gonna grab some coffee. Let's get to talking about the painting. Well, let's get to talking about Blondie, then we'll talk about the painting. And, and when I say Blondie, I'm namely talking about Debbie Harry. I've been working on a pop art series of some of my favorite musicians. Now the list includes people like Prince, Bono of U2, Kanye West. Out of everyone in this series, Blondie would probably be the, the artist that I've been listening to the longest. One of my earliest memories when it comes to Blondie, I actually have two and they're both movie related. The first one that I that I remember, one that I remember vividly, or that I think about often, from the Rugrats movie. So there's a scene where the stupid babies, along with, um, I think, I would assume Angelica, they get lost. I want to say that they get lost in the forest, although I could be completely wrong. Being as Rugrats, maybe it was just a park and then they remember it as a forest. I don't remember, I really don't. I've only seen the movie once, maybe twice, I think once. But if I'm not mistaken, there's a scene where Angelica loses her doll and she is out looking for her. And she's climbing mountains, I think. She's like going to go to the forest. And so she is persistent. She will find Cynthia. So there's this like, this like montage as Angelica's going after Cynthia. She starts to sing One Way or Another by Blondie. It actually works very well. I remember being at the movies watching this with my brother. Kids movies will do that thing where they'll go like this really cool song. And the song is there because it's a cool song and like little kids will enjoy it. But it's also there because it's a famous song that adults will recognize. And therefore they're both having fun. And my brother had been a Blondie fan for some time now. So he was familiar with the song in a different way than that was. I'm almost certain that after the movie, my brother showed me the song or played me the song or he was just like, you've heard the song, here is the song. The other movie was actually The Bride of Chucky. I grew up with older uncles always around and my siblings are older than me. They didn't necessarily care if, if a movie or a TV show was quote unquote appropriate. If they wanted to watch it, they were gonna watch it. Horror movies or violent movies or what have you, they were just, they would play. And one of the movies that would play pretty often because my brother was a fan and I think some of my uncles might have enjoyed those movies were the Chucky movies, the child's play. In the ride of Chucky, Chucky, God, I think, again, I've only seen this movie like three times, but in the Bride of Chucky, Chucky, has a girlfriend, I think it was his ex-girlfriend, and he takes her body and puts it in the doll. I don't remember why. Um, oh yeah, so what happens, when the movie starts, um, someone put Chucky to like a wood chipper thing or something, you know, where they just kind of cut him uh, into pieces. And then uh, his girlfriend finds him and then stitches him back together. His ex-girlfriend, I suppose. When he comes back to life, I think it's like she does like a little spell thing to bring him back to life. I don't remember. I could be wrong. So and at this point, when he's back to life, I, th I don't know if he waits for her to go to sleep or how he does it. But then he casts a spell on her so that she then goes into the body of a doll. And then they're trying to get the body of a couple I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to go into a, find a couple and then get and get their souls in that couple's body. I think, I don't remember. So there's a scene where the bride of Chucky, where she gets ready. She gets in a wedding gown and she gets makeup on. She looks the way that she looks in the cover. I don't remember the cover, but I would assume that's what she looks like in the cover. So she gets ready and Blondie's Call Me plays. And it's this montage where she applies makeup and she gets into this like in her wedding gown and she goes on some like Doc Martens or something. 
Which in retrospect is kind of ridiculous. I mean, they're they're plastic. They're they're dolls, so they're made out of plastic, and therefore makeup wouldn't necessarily work. They would need something like acrylic paint or or the kind of paint that you could you use in model cars, which might just be acrylic paint. I don't know. It might be like or enamel. I don't know what they would need. So, but she uses traditional makeup. I it, the, when she does her nails, she uses nail polish, which that kind of makes sense. But to put lipstick on plastic doesn't necessarily doesn't entirely. But quite honestly, there are far more ridiculous things happening in the movie than than this doll applying makeup. But that is just the part that I fixated on. But besides those movies, Blondie has always been around. You know, when I was in high school, I I listened to them. A lot. My personal favorite, it's a cover song, Hanging on the Telephone. And then of course there's Heart of Glass, there's uh, One Way or Another, Call Me, Denise, Ripper to Shreds, and Rapture. Rapture is a really interesting song. <laughs> the whole idea of Rapture, odds are I'm gonna get a lot of it wrong. So you should Google. Anytime I tell you something, Google it and do your own research because I don't write any of this down. This is just based on memory and memory is flawed. From what I've gathered, there were these parties in in uh, New York. And there was DJs that would go and they would make their own uh, beats. And then that's, that's kind of where like Rapper's Delight kind of thing uh, stems from. Or the very first generations of MCs kind of stem from. But there were these parties. People would go and then they would either freestyle or they had prepared stuff. But they would go and they would perform. And it was just, you just kept going and going and going. And it's kind of like the origins of hip hop. Kind of. There's more to it. There's a lot more to it. One of the people that would go to these um, New York parties was Debbie Harry. And apparently she got to talking with one of the main people of that circle. And she actually mentions him in Rapture. So Debbie Harry saw this. She thought it was great. And she wanted it to go into her own music. She wanted it to go into Blondie. She wanted it to go mainstream she wanted it to be more than just parties in new york that's where uh, rapture stems from that's why in rapture debbie harry raps it's not great rapping it is not she doesn't have the, the greatest flow she doesn't have the smartest lyrics but at the same time you do have to remember what a rap was like at the time or it was in its infancy but it was or is credited as being the first rap song to ever break into the billboard, to ever hit the mainstream. Let's talk about the painting. I kind of approach making this painting slightly different than the other. One of the things that I did differently that I didn't do in the other ones, I colored the background in a neutral or a cool gray color. I rarely do that. And it's not for any any real practical reason. It's just really out of laziness that I don't do it. So when you leave the canvas white, sometimes it can be difficult to see the contrast between colors because you could you could put a light, let's just say like a light pink, but that being next to a white will make that pink look darker. Oftentimes what'll happen is that you will have done something and then maybe when you add the background or or maybe once you add uh, the t-shirt or, or just a different element that isn't like the skin tone or what have you, you will notice that your color temperatures, your uh, tones are slightly off. One of the easiest ways to prevent that from happening is to color the canvas in a neutral color. One of the reasons why I decided to go this route this time, it was the last painting in the series. I was short on time. I had to make sure that the colors I set down were correct from the get-go. I didn't have the time for this painting in particular to go back and change 
the skin tones or go back and change the hair color or whatever it would be. On top of that, one of the sketchbooks that I was using or the sketchbook that I'm using is a toned gray sketchbook. The paper is gray and what's great is that it allows you to use white gel pens or, or white color pens or whatever it is. And also you get to use the darks and it's this way of when you're drawing, you're figuring out the lights and you're figuring out the shadows and you're figuring out the midtones all at the same time. With that sketchbook or just having done a lot of work in that sketchbook at this point, I, I started to see the benefits, the benefits of having a neutral color as your base. The first thing I did was kind of lay a sketch down. The sketch again is just for me. The way I'm using it is as a way to know where the darks are, where the lights are, where composition goes, that make sure that everything is proportioned. And, and it's, it's a way of measuring for me. One of the things that I did in this painting that is very different from the others, even though it's the same series, I felt that every painting deserved to have its own flair, if you will. I've always really enjoyed the way fashion designers draw. I figured this would be a good time to do something similar, something in that vein. I wanted it to look like not necessarily a realistic portrayal of Debbie Harry, but almost like a fashion drawing, a fashion painting of, of Debbie Harry. The neck is longer, the limbs are, are longer than they should be. They're a little bit more edgy. The jaw is a little bit stronger. She has a strong jaw, but the jaw is a little bit, a little bit stronger. The way the colors were made, it was, it was with fashion illustrator in mind. Whenever I'm painting from a picture, one thing I like to do is to just get the picture and then turn it into black and white. That way the only thing that you see is value. You see the lightest are the lightest and the darkest are the darkest. And then from there, you can use the colors. And with the color, you get to say where the value is. You can make the lighter lighter, and you can make the darker darker. And in doing so, it doesn't necessarily well matter or it doesn't really matter what colors you use. All that it matters is the value of the colors, which are the darkest, which are the lightest. So with this Debbie Harry painting, I was in this sort of thinking in terms of skin tone. I was just trying to think of a way to make Debbie Harry kind of pinkish, kind of like a pinkish hue. Not like the way the LaRue painting was, but something, again, still thinking in terms of a fashion designer, fashion illustrator. Since this was a much more stylistic painting in the, in the sense of the way the body and the proportions were made, Proportions weren't a big concern. The biggest concern with this painting was just value. Because I painted the, the, the canvas in a gray neutral tone, that was actually kind of easy to accomplish. But the background originally was just gonna be this blue thing, but with the shirt being red, the hair being yellow, background being like a sky blue, that was already like three of the primary colors, which are three colors, and it just, I didn't like the balance of it. I wanted there to be a, a different color uh, tones and, and what have you in all eight of the paintings. But at the end, honestly, the pink worked the best. And I actually liked the blue, but in a weird way with the blue, it looked really cartoonish. You know, it, it almost looked like, I would argue the way like little kids would draw, which is they don't completely understand color not necessarily, and everything just looks like too strong. I didn't like the way the, the balance of it looked with the blue. That was one of the last minute choices where I had to go back and change it. Overall, I had a really fun time making this painting. It was actually pretty simple to make. It was a lot of stylistic choices with the anatomy of it, with the proportions of it. And because of that, it wasn't that difficult. Thank you guys for watching. If you have the time, check out the previous paintings and check out the, the newer paintings. There's, there'll be a new episode uh, next week. In the meantime, you could just check out my social media links. They're all down below. My Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. On top of that, I make comic books. They are linked 
down below. Check them out. Check out my, they're on my webtoons and my tapas. I am currently making a comic book called Lads and the comic book called Kills Retro. Till next time. And in the meantime, um, be good, be safe, be well, be kind, be generous, and make art, I suppose, if you like this painting and it inspired you, feel free to tag me in whatever it is that you make and I will do my best to look at it. Anyway, I'll see you. Cheers.